Welcome everybody. It's Thursday. It's 1.30. This is our 45th Facebook Live. I'm Chris Gabralchik and this is Kevin Adams. Hello. We're at Lubrication Specialties World Headquarters, the maker of Hotshot Secret. Everybody knows and loves Hotshot Secret. Um, today we're going to be talking about the snake oil mentality um, versus in the industry versus what we're doing because that's always been the thing that we've been fighting. And we're going to open up the questions to you so you can ask all the questions you want. It could be about oil, additives, fuels, racing. Kevin seems to know a lot about racing. So he's, he's our racing expert, him and Kyle. So feel free to just tune in. If we don't know the answer, we'll tell you. We'll do our best to get it for you. Um, but the main topic that we want to talk about is how most additives are made versus what we're doing. Kevin is also our VP of Research and Development. So he might be able to tell us a little bit about what's going on in the lab. Yep. some of the new things they're working on yep. in free giveaway we'll try to give away some product yeah. at the end of the show yeah actually this week we're doing something a little bit different we're giving away banners <clears throat> okay yeah on the on the website you know, we a lot of times we we have people ask us for banners and stickers and we thought it'd be a little different this week freshen it up a little bit and give away a couple banners excellent yeah all right kevin that's your idea <clears throat> no no that was marketing or marketing all right marketing <laughs> go air yeah what is what is what is what announcements have we got to make? Um, one thing that we don't do very often, as far as dealer special goes, dealer specials go, we're offering a 10% off cases of Stiction Eliminator for the remainder of the month. And then, if you order three cases of Stiction Eliminator, you'll get also three bottles of Gasoline Extreme uh, to try. You know, our thought there is that. Uh, you know, we make these bottles available. You know, sample them to the customers, and then you know that'll that'll help generate more business. You know, we do a lot of sampling here because when people try the product, they mm -hmm. they try it, they feel a difference. You know, freshens up their engines, and and they um, they're convinced it's it's a good that's product. one of our our number one ways of picking up customers is with samples, and it's a, it's an expensive way to get the job done. But yeah, generally, once people try the product, and they see there is a difference between what we're doing versus what other people are doing they get more excited and they'll come back yeah. so we have a new infographic up stiction eliminator and fuel economy gains so this would be our white paper that we did mm, three years ago four years yeah, ago was, yeah so we when we do a white paper our motivation to this is to get all the details out uh, a lot of people don't want all the details they just want a few key pieces of information that would be the arena that i usually live in and then there's other people that want to do a deep dive. That would be the arena Kevin lives in. So we try to do the white paper for a little bit of both of that. So if you if you want to know all the details, how the test was performed, you know what were the parameters, we put together these white papers. Well, they were kind of boring, and not a lot of people read them. Now the people <laughs> that did read them liked them and thought they were packed full of information. But for everybody else, they were not nearly as exciting. So our marketing team went about trying to make it a little bit more user friendly something that might be a little more easier to digest and informational so they put what we call an infographic and levi is that the infographic right there levi oh there's the new version so that's the before and the after that that levi is scrolling through yeah. um, and uh, I, just to give you some background on this test you know a lot of a lot of things we do in r d is actually feedback from the customers you know people People are always tinkering and trying new things, and you know our our core of Stiction Eliminator, our core group, of course, is the is the Fords that had the Huey injectors. But we we have a lot of customers that have, you know, back then were using it in other applications and giving us good mm -hmm. good feedback. So we wanted to actually do a quantifiable test on a Cummins where we really get some data and find out, you know, the before and after. You know, this particular truck was a FedEx truck with a 6.7 Cummins in it. And our, our purpose was twofold on the fuel side on, and on the oil side to see what the effects were, um, the restoring effects when you put that in the truck. So it was, it was a good test. It was, it was something that we were just there to document it. It mm -hmm. was the Ohio State Center of Automotive Research. We, we paid them a lot of money to, to conduct the test for us. We were just there to, to record the results. And they're a certified EPA station so if um, Toyota needs to get the sticker to say this is what the yeah. fuel economy is they take it there these are the people that certify that so they have you know, like the city driving and the highway driving 
just like you're familiar when you go to buy a car. They're, the, they're one of the companies that does that. So we wanted a, a legit, credible third-party test, so we went there to have it done. Yep. So you want to tell us how the test was done? Yeah, um, so, so there's not a lot of, of semi-sized demos or uh, dinos. dinos in the state of Ohio, uh, but we knew that Ohio State had one and they had a credible uh, testing program together. So, you know, just to just to set up the scene, the the FedEx truck strapped to the dyno. They have a a uh, a, a separate fuel cell from the truck that's that's on a scale that that monitors the consumption of fuel over the test. We did a number of. Uh, so the fuel consumption is measured by weight. Exactly. Yeah, that's really the most most uh, accurate, accurate way. way to do it. Mm -hmm. So, so we we used the EPA you know test method like you said, and then we actually did three different tests. You know, we did our our baselines were three different sequences, and then we did our actual test. We did diesel extreme and we did stiction eliminator. And you know, basically. You know what's what's happening is you know it's kind of known in the industry that you know as your as, as your truck gets older it loses performance and you know of course some of that performance loss is from wear but but some of it's just from from stuff getting into the engine like stiction on the on the turbo bearings the turbo doesn't spool up as fast you have uh, stiction on the rings, so the mm -hmm. rings aren't sealing up as, as well. Getting blow by. Yeah, getting blow by from that. Cam. Um, yeah, pretty pretty much. You know, th there's a lot of areas in the engines, especially in diesels, where you know, you know you get you know accumulation. So so the stiction eliminator, it's it's really probably one of the only products that lubricates and cleans in the same product. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to do that in the same. And the purpose of this test was just to prove that. Even though it is a cleaner, it it still frees up fuel economy and horsepower because of the reduction in friction. You know, basically, what's happening is you're reducing heat, and that energy from heat can be turned into mm -hmm. to, into work. Well, and drag too, because yeah. on all those surfaces, the more varnish or stiction you get, the more drag you yeah. get. So yeah. it, even though it might seem slight, even like on a camshaft or something, it's enough to slow it down. Um, Oh, exponentially throughout the whole engine is what I'm getting at because yep. just a little bit everywhere creates a lot of extra friction. Yep. And that's what we were that's what we were testing to see if we can clean that out and what were the effects of it. So it's not just a matter of cleaning out the inside of the engine. I mean, we can do that with you know kerosene if you wanted, but being able to do it safely, reduce the wear, and increase the horsepower, yeah. that was really the home run we were looking for. Right. So it wasn't just a cleaner. So how did the test go? We started off with baseline, right? Yeah, we, yeah. We did a did a baseline, and you know what we had found that was the, the results of the test. We had a 2.2 percent increase in city driving, and a 3.6 percent increase in highway driving mm -hmm. was the results of the test. And, and now like those this, numbers are phenomenal in the industry. So 3 yeah. percent increase is huge. Yeah. And in reality, if you can document it at this level of of science, now do you think that most of that came from removing the stiction or increasing the lubricity inside there? It, it was probably, it, I'm just throwing this out there, but I would guess 75% was probably from the reduction of friction based on the, the test results we get from FR3, and probably 25% was from the cleaning. Yeah, the cleaning effect and restoring of compression. Could be. And then on the highway driving, we got a 3.6% increase. Yeah. Yep. So it's consistent. That should be about where the increase should be. So, yep. so the, the oil additive did help the fuel economy. Mm -hmm. We're also lowering, decreasing the wear level in the engine because of the nanocarbons and the esters were able to give you less wear than you would have without it. Exactly. Yep. So more horsepower, better fuel economy, yep. less wear. Yep. It's, I think you touched on them all. Yeah, that's a pretty good thing. <laughs> So you can read the infographic on our website and on Facebook. Levi's putting a, a link up there if you want to go on there and go through it. If you have questions about it or want to know more details about what happened and how we did it, we'd be glad to, you know, dive into it even more. Yeah. And then we should probably, while Levi's getting that up there, we should probably look at any questions that we've got. Is there anything going on there? Oh, the guys from USMC Racing are wondering where Kyle's at. <laughs> where is Kyle? 
Kyle is on the road. We're going to talk about that. He's in one of the events we have this weekend. Uh, this this Friday and Saturday, we might as well talk about the events right now. Sure. Um, Kyle's at the Holly Rock Customs Summer Diesel Showdown in Virginia. It's a third leg of the ODSS race uh, or series. Um, this year, that's besides Firepunk, it's one of the new events that they've added. So Kyle and Rich are, are going to attend that. They took the took the BMW down to race, and we're going to have a booth there and, and visit with everybody. Are we, we going to tie into them, or are they still en route? Um, actually, today is their setup day. The, the event's going to be tomorrow and Saturday. So, okay. yeah, unfortunately, it didn't match up with what we're doing. So, And then uh, the other part of our, our department, uh, Diesel Don, he is going to be at Watson's Diesel in, in uh, Watson, Michigan. They That's a tractor pull. They, uh, they're they having a, a Lucas Pro Pulling League tractor pull. One of our dealers up there is the title sponsor. So that's Watson Diesel up in uh, Jackson, Michigan. They're a pretty big size uh, diesel shop up in up in Jackson, Michigan. They have, I think, pretty 10 cool. bays, 10 service bays. And, 10 service uh, bays. Yeah, they pretty much do everything diesel. Watson so, Diesel, yeah. very good. If you're up in that area, check them out. We also have a Truck U premiere this weekend on, on Sunday at 1030. We're going to be doing the tech tip on EDT, and then on Saturday at 1, Truck U's on, and we're going to have FR3 on there. So if you're sitting around watching TV, if it's raining where you are, like it is here, <laughs> um, which I don't think it's ever going to end, yeah. I think we need to get into the ARC business, start building ARCs, because it just seems like that's all that happens is it rains. <laughs> so if you're sitting around watching TV, tune into Truck U, and you'll, you'll see our product on there. How about the questions? Are there any other ones going on there? We haven't really had any questions, just a bunch of shout outs. Uh, Mark was asking if we're planning on a fuel filter system. Uh, we don't have that on the schedule for at least the next year. Uh, what we are looking at is offering oil change kits, which as far as filters go, probably spin on oil filters would be our, our next offering. We just have a whole kit together for each vehicle. The France filter can be used on a fuel system. We've not perfected on how to do that yet, but I have done it before and it, it cleans the fuel really well and gets it, you know, microscopic clean. Yeah. Yeah, Mark, Mark the, the same person that asked that question, he said he has 457,000 miles on a 15 Duramax, just had pump pressure checked. Um, and the uh, and had the injectors checked and all is good using the products. He's been using them since new, so Very so good. that's a good testimony to the lubricity and the protection of the, miles. Yeah, half a million miles. Yeah, yeah, Very that's good. good on a Duramax. Excellent, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, next thing we're going to talk about is R and D. What we're up to. Uh, next thing on our list is coming out with a, a line of RV products. And honestly, some of them are just a little tweak of some of our existing products. Mm -hmm. But if you think of the unique needs of somebody that has an RV, you know, they drive it for a little bit and then they park it for many months, you know, six months, probably longer. So I uh, know mine sits for six months. I yeah. Need to <laughs> so get you're out of here. I need, I need to go camping. <laughs> yeah, you're talking about taking August off. Yeah, I should do that. Yeah. And get, get some miles on it. But, so what are we doing about that? We're going to put some extra fuel stabilizer in? Yeah, R fuel stabilizer, uh, water dispersants. Uh, we have water dispersants in our existing product, but just keeping in mind that the fuel is just going to sit there for possibly a year, two years at a time. Uh, we just tweak the formulas just a little bit to, to tailor to the RV market. So And a gas and a diesel? Yeah, yeah. There's, there's a couple expansions to the line. Uh, we're, we're going to address both of them with the RVs. On the gas side, you know, we already have a gasoline extreme to clean up the injectors. Mm -hmm. We have a stabilizer in it that will keep the fuel fresh for a year if a person uses the gasoline extreme. We're going to use a keep clean version of that injector cleaner for an everyday treatment for gasoline for RVs. It's going to have an everyday treatment, water dispersant, rust and oxidation inhibitor, you know, everything uh, a person needs to protect their fuel system on the gasoline side. And then on the on the diesel side, you know, pretty much the same strategy. You know, we we we've mentioned it before that our our strategy with formulating our fuel additives is to have 
a lot of chemistry to give you a, a payback for using the product, the, the fuel injector cleaners and the cetane, and then the rest of it's the protective fuel system. So we, we've, we've pulled that strategy into our RV line and just tweaked it a little bit to tailor it for their needs. What would you think about an oil system if we put a France filter with our blue diamond engine oil and made it a fill for life? Because hmm. very seldom do RVs ever get over 100,000 miles. Hmm. And if you put the filter on and kept a clean start off with the blue diamond, yeah. I know most RVers are not, like a truck driver is used to regular maintenance because that's part of your life. You know, you got to inspect the truck, you got to change things out. But when you're RVing, you're really just a camper. Yeah. You know, the last thing I want to do is get out there and change oil on my RV. I really don't want to take it in someplace to have them do it either. Right. Luckily, I bring it here and Chad does it. But yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that, that, that sounds like a good idea. I mean, it, it really wouldn't be super expensive. And if I, for peace of mind, mm -hmm. to know that I'm going to go down to Florida and over to Texas and maybe up through California, and I don't have to worry about stopping anywhere to check the oil. Yeah. It might be worth it. So give us some thoughts on that. If you have yeah. an RV, would you be interested in a fill for life system? If, if we could prove it out and gave you the test kits to prove it, we could put a T on there so they could check it, make sure that it was mm -hmm. good. I mean, send an yeah. oil sample in once a year and right. just leave it until it goes. I, yeah. I think we can do that. Yeah. So a reminder, just if you have any questions, post them on here and we'll jump on them. What else is going on with the RD line, RV line? Sorry. Uh, yeah, the other products, uh, we don't have any a, any spray lubricants in our line right now. Uh, we've ran across the unique chemistry that has really unique rust prevention properties. So what we are doing is we're incorporating that into a spray grease that's uh, that will be used for slide the the slide outs and the it's, it's basically going to be called a slide lube for for RVs. Will it be penetrating also or? That that particular one, no. The the idea would be it would be a stay spray and stay type application. It's going to be thick. It actually mixes in the container as you as you spray it out, so it cool. stays in place. Mark is asking. He's an RV transporter, so he's the hmm. hot shotter that we started the company after. Yeah. He says I'm having problem with my small generators. I'm guessing it's the gas we use. Will your gas extreme product help clean that out? Yeah, actually, we, we've. In, in testing the gasoline extreme product, we've we've freshened up old gas, which is surprising. Um, actually, one of my family members, th they had a car that was sitting for a long period of time, missing really bad. It was it was running perfectly before they parked it. Uh, when they when they went to run it, it was missing like crazy. I was like, well, this is a great opportunity to test test the gasoline extreme. Put it in, and within 15 miles. It just had just a slight miss, and now it doesn't have a miss at all after running for a few tanks. But it, it made it like 95% better in within 10 minutes. So there you go, Mark. Yeah, let's get Mark some gasoline extreme. Yeah, let's know how it works. Yeah, message us afterwards, and we'll we'll get you some product to to test. We'd be interested to hear your feedback on that application. You'll be impressed. It's it's yeah. a unique chemistry that really does a great job. Any other reminders? No, I think that's it. Just have the dealer shout outs. Okay. We got diesel inject injection service in Boise, Idaho. Thank you for being one of our distributors. If you're in Boise, go to diesel injection service. They carry our line of products that can inform you and let you know how they work and how it's going to help you. Harbor City Diesel in British Columbia. Black Smoke in Bozeman, Montana. You know any of these? I haven't personally spoken to any of these guys. <laughs> I haven't either, so yeah. don't don't hold it against us. But we have a, a Diesel Dawn and Rich and TJ in there, and they do all yeah. the heavy lifting on this thing. Me and Kevin, we just sit around and look pretty. <laughs> we got Martin's Diesel Shop in Tipton, Missouri, and Weikert Ford in Lake Walls, Florida. I think we need to go visit them because it's raining here. Yeah. We got Chillicothe Ford in Chillicothe, Missouri. So those are our dealers of the week. Yep. Well, big shout out to them. Yep. If you guys have any questions, let us know. This week we're like running low on questions, so we'll jump right into the snake oil lesson. The term snake oil has been around since the 1800s. Yeah. I mean, if you watch an old western, they always talk about snake oil, pull up in the buggy, and they got the snake oil <laughs> inside. But back then, the snake oil was usually an elixir that you would drink to make you feel better. Um, 
sometimes it was just cocaine, but that's what they did back then. So it says it was a real product initially that was created by the Chinese laborers while working on transcontinental railroad. They made an oil from Chinese water snakes that they thought would reduce their muscle inflammation. That's interesting. I was, I was wondering about that. Chinese water snakes? <laughs> All right. So a get-rich-quick salesman took the idea and sold their own snake oil with no benefits, and now snake oil is defined as a product policy, etc., of little real worth or value, and is promoted as a solution to a problem. Here's a quick video that explains the history a little bit better. Levi, are you you have this ready to go? Hey, yeah. You gonna play it or? We're just going to talk about it. The original snake oil might just have worked. It all started in the 1800s. While working on the Transcontinental Railroad, Chinese laborers used an oil made from the Chinese water snake that they believed would reduce the inflammation on their sore and tired muscles. Word spread of the healing oil. American salesmen looking to get rich made their own. But they used rattlesnake, which didn't have the same medicinal properties as the Chinese water snake. But when the salesman added some alcohol and a little opium, folks couldn't get enough. The salesman peddled their snake oil at vaudeville-style medicine shows. At the 1893 World's Fair in Chicago, Clark Stanley, the rattlesnake king, took a live rattlesnake, sliced it open, and plunged it into boiling water to extract its oil. The crowd went wild. Little did they know, Stanley had stopped adding real snake to the snake oil he was selling. The number of medical cure-alls for sale grew and ads started popping up in newspapers for countless other concoctions claiming to treat everything from hair loss to skull fractures. But muckraker journalists were skeptical and began to report that snake oil and the other untested cure-alls caused addiction, overdoses, and deaths. In 1905, Collier's Magazine published a series of scathing exposés calling them the Great American Fraud. The public outcry that followed led to the passing of the Pure Food and Drug Act and the creation of the Food and Drug Administration to protect consumers from unsafe medication. But modern day snake oil cures still exist and you can visit ConsumerReports.org to learn more. Uh, we need them. All right, so now you know the history of snake oil. This is what we've been fighting since day one. Now, originally, we sold just industrial commercial lubricants and additives were a very small part of it. When we developed the product to fix the, um, the Huey injector, mm. you know, we knew we had a solution and they had tested it for two years and it worked literally 19 times out of 20. So they said nine times out of 10, but you know, we kept testing this over and over again and seeing that it worked. Okay. But then as soon as we introduced it to the public, you know, we got bombarded with, you know, this is snake oil and I would never believe this. And why would you put an additive in your oil? How's that going to fix your injector? Mm. There was a big story to tell and we tried to unfold it, but it was still, um, from a defensive measure because you were still being lopped in with other products that they considered to be snake oil. Yeah. I think that some of those that they kind of nailed down are like motor coat, um, Duralube, um, yeah. Slick 50. I mean, and those products aren't, they're not that good. I mean, they, they make things slippery and they give you some short-term gains, but then in the long term they create more corrosion and more um, abrasion inside your engine. So. Mm -hmm. You know, I see that I understand what the apprehension is towards a snake oil, but that's sure. not what we were doing. I yeah. mean, we were building, you know, cutting edge, top tier products. Unfortunately, where do you buy this top tier product? Well, you buy it on the same shelf as you do the snake oil. So, mm -hmm. how do you dif differentiate yourself from, you know, a Duralube or a, a Slick 50? You know, it's, it's a tough way to go. Yeah. One, one of the things that we try to do is a lot of testing. We try to be extremely transparent. I know if you've watched these, um, videos before you know that we tell you a lot about the product how we developed it what we're doing we're not um, we're not trying to hide behind bullet points and try to hide behind claims we'll we're pretty straightforward about it. this is what works this is what doesn't this is why it works mm -hmm. this is why it doesn't work I just wish we could get a little bit more above that you know a little bit out of that realm yeah yeah it's always gonna be a struggle and to be clear, there there is other good additives out there. You know, when we were developing the FR3 and the and the uh, the improved version of the Stix Eliminator, you know, we we tested those. We did wear testing, we did vehicle testing, and you know, some of the products were were, were legitimate. Uh, you know, we used them as 
you know what we how we needed to do better uh, you know as our as our goal but uh you know just just to know that they're not all snake oil there is some le legitimate ones out there but um, it is a struggle look, look at you talk about the g133 yeah so it looked to me like and i'm picturing this bar graph that we've got with all the different products we tested everything from stp on up just to see where we would place and how we can beat them it seemed like 80% of them were in the poor performing category and 20%. Yeah, there's definitely, yeah, that's what I would say. About 20%? Yeah. yeah. Something less than 20 of what you would use in your own car? Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> that's just, that's I'll right. go with that. <laughs> so Daniel says, hey, I love your stuff. World of difference in my 7.3. That's exactly Thanks. what it was made for. Sean says, I just did my first 7.3 oil change to use Green Diamond. Now I'm hauling 7,000 pound camper. Should I switch to 15W40 synthetic with mileage? You're using 5W40 uh, Green Diamond? I I wouldn't switch unless you've got a good reason yeah. to, to want to do that. Yeah. The, the 5W40 will perform as well as the 1540 even on the hot condition, even though it sounds like it's a thinner weight. Um, because it's a synthetic, if you put both of those in a pan at 180, they should both be the same thickness because that's the way it works yeah i think th this is i think a confusing point for most people is is what that first number means you know i've heard people say well a 0 40 is so much thinner than a 15 40 but the the truth of the matter is is that first number it has a w after it because that's that's the winter weight mm -hmm. that's that's how it flows the it's temperature, winterized. Yeah, yeah. The temperature that your truck runs at around <clears> 200 <throat> degrees, actually the viscosity is done at 212, that's the top number. So a 040 and a 1540 will protect your truck exactly the same at operating temperature because they're both exactly the same weight. The only difference is when they're cold, they'll act differently. Mm -hmm. you know, the 15 weight will act like a 15 weight, 15 weight and the zero <laughs> weight will act like a zero weight. And it's, <laughs> I, I think that's quoted at, what, zero degrees? is the winter weight that sounds right yeah. yeah yeah so that that's the that's the main difference so, so with the synthetic zero w40 what you're getting is a much more versatile that's called the viscosity index uh, if you read the viscosity index that's the difference between um, the low temperature and the high temperature viscosity yeah the the higher the change the more that the oil can go the more viscosity index it's got right yeah. the yep. less change it makes no wait the other way around the less change it makes the higher viscosity index yeah, you're right. You're right. Second time. I didn't think through that. <laughs> All right. Can you guys test the Pittsburgh Power Diesel additive and post the results? I feel like they are ripping off a lot of truckers. Pittsburgh Power Diesel. You know, I honestly have never heard I've of it. I've never that heard one. it. Yeah. We'll look it up, Levi. Yeah. Get us some intel on the Pittsburgh Power Diesel additive, and we will check it. And we, we go through and check a lot of different products. Um, we're always trying to stay up to date looking for the latest and greatest just to make sure that we're on top of our game um, you know people you would think that our our research and development would be like a small part of the company but it's not it's constantly changing It's whenever we find something new and better we're always looking for ways to improve yeah. on everything we've got so it's it is a it's a big challenge and we stay on top of it we want to be the best of the best and we want to maintain that across the board yeah, and, and as far as evaluating fuel items, you really can learn a lot by, by looking at SDS sheets. Mm -hmm. uh, when we register our fuel additives, we, we found out, when we registered them with the EPA, we found out that we can't put any more active ingredients in our fuel additives because we've hit the EPA limit. So the probability that somebody's better than us and registered with the EPA is, is really zero. They could be the same, but what we found out from comparing SDS sheets and doing our own testing here is is that, that really the active ingredients, in particular the cetane improver, is normally half or 25 percent, which mm -hmm. is where you get your payback a lot of times from using the product. Yeah. So, and what the cetane does? Cetane is going to make the fuel ignite more on time. So you're normally right around a 48 to 49 cetane is maximum. So theoretically, a 55 cetane fuel shouldn't burn any better than a 48. Now, one of the things to consider is the, the, the national minimum is 40. I seen that question from Kyle. <laughs> the national minimum is 40. Yeah. Okay, but what they're saying, when you're looking at that CT number of 40, that's an average of all the, 
the seating or all the diesel droplets. Mm -hmm. So if you were to again take the magic school bus and go into the cylinder and see the the spray from the, from the injector nozzle and pulled off different droplets, some of those droplets are going to be like a 30 cetane, some are going to be a 35 cetane, some are going to be a 45 cetane or a 50. Now this is where the problem comes in. You know, those ones that are 47 cetane and 45 cetane are going to ignite when the piston hits top dead center mm -hmm. or close to it, and that's when you're going to get your explosion to push the piston back down. Yeah. The ones that are 30 and 35, they're lollygaggers. So once the heat and the pressure builds up, they're going to explode, so you get a little bit of a delayed reaction. Mm -hmm. So one of the biggest... Um, well, the biggest way to know that you've got a cetane problem or an extremely low cetane problem is you'll get a knock. Hmm. Whenever the engine starts knocking, what you're hearing is two different detonations inside there. Yeah. And again, so all those droplets have a different cetane. By raising all of it up, you're bringing all those 35s up into the 40 range. You're bringing the 40s into the 45 range. So you're getting a more complete combustion. Yeah. So by making half of like the diesel extreme, half of its cetane boost, hmm on the ethyl hexyl nitrate. So what happens when that piston hits top dead center, we're able to get a complete explosion. All that power from that explosion is pushing that piston down, giving you the power that you need to get up the hill. Yeah. So if you have any kind of delay there, any kind of, um, you know, any kind of delay from low cetane, you'll, you'll get two explosions or three explosions and that's when you'll get that knocking. Yeah. So you've all heard it and that's what's going on. Now you know. Yeah. So, I guess the other benefit of cetane is in the winter time because diesels are compression ignition. Mm -hmm. it, it, if you have trouble with cold starts, if, if your cetane is at a at the target level of mm -hmm. you know say 48, it'll light up a lot easier in the winter time. Yeah, it's yeah faster starting winter or summer. It's going to start yeah. faster. It's yeah. you know the ethyl hexyl nitrate is the same thing they make dynamite out of, so it is kind of explosive, but it does bring power to your engine mm -hmm. when used safely. Kyle wants to know, he says, <laughs> we know Chris has a favorite additive TBN booster, so what is your favorite additive, Kevin? That's a good question. <laughs> yeah, my, my favorite additive is Stiction Eliminator. And, and the reason why is when, when, I, when we first started doing research and development with the product, we improved the product. We knew it was good for six liter and seven threes. You know, from from my perspective, we keep finding new and new new and more applications that's that it's that it's benefiting. Uh, we're still it's it's like there's a sea of opportunity from an R and D perspective. So we're continually testing these applications out. You know, from right. you know lifter knock to uh, to restoring compression. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, reducing oil consumption. So yeah, yeah, stick eliminator, easy, easy top choice. Yeah, and one one of the newer things that's happened with the, with the latest version that Kevin came up with with the stick eliminator that's important is um, increasing the film strength around the ring. So if you if you think about a diesel engine that's got maybe two hundred thousand miles on it, um, which isn't hard to do. I mean, two hundred thousand on diesels a, a walk in the park, right? Okay, but you've brought in all this dirt and carbon and things when you've Put the combustion parts so on the top side you've got all this crusty stuff around that ring yeah. then that ring's job is to act as a squeegee up and down there and to keep the the explosion from going into your oil mm -hmm. so the blow by now on the bottom side again this ring has got an explosion on one side what three times a minute second or something like that so it's getting really hot yeah. that's what i'm getting at so on the bottom side you've got this oil that it's pulling down on the walls well guess what that's burning up too yeah. So when you look at the inside of those rings, you're going to see carbon build up on the top and on the bottom. Mm -hmm. So when we put the stiction eliminator in, we're affecting change from the bottom. It's cleaning it up. And then when you mm -hmm. put the diesel extreme in, you're cleaning up the top. Mm -hmm. So now that ring should become more pliable to be able to go up and down there and give us better compression. Yeah. Now, that's the theory. The truth is we've tested and we know that that's what's happening because mm -hmm. we have less blow by after we've treated the, the engine. Uh, we also get more power, better fuel economy. So part of what wasn't exploding because the compression wasn't high enough is now exploding. Part of what was getting into the oil isn't getting into the oil any longer. Mm -hmm. So we're seeing that across the board. And what's compelling about this whole story is the fact that we've not seen anything disprove it. So, you know, it's one in science, at least in our science and tribology, a lot of what we're doing is um, making good guesses, coming up with a theory, trying to look for evidence to prove your theory the best you can. Because you, 
you know, you don't really have a camera inside there to watch it and see what's happening. But what's compelling here is nothing has proven us wrong. So like every test that we do, every time we try to test this theory out, it comes out correct. Like, yes, that goes right along with what we're saying. Um, even to the point on one of our tests that we had with um, the nanocarbon, there was less dirt inside the oil. Yeah. So if you have less so dirt in the oil after the treatment, how can that be? You know, the oil was changed and then a, a treated product was put in. So the point is the dirt only gets into the oil coming through the air filter into the cylinder, it explodes, and then some of that dirt ends up in your oil. That's normal, everyday silicon. It shows up on your oil analysis. But when we use Stiction Eliminator or FR3, there was less of it over the same amount of time. Okay, well, how did that happen? Right. Well, the only thing we could have done was increase the film strength, better film strength, the rings are seating better, and we're keeping the dirt out of the engine oil, which means that we're keeping the explosion where it's supposed to be yeah. and the oil where it's supposed to be. Yeah. So again, it all proves out. So Kyle wants to know, does lubricity have a counter effect to C-Team? And he's uh, asking some tough questions. Uh, I don't think so. <laughs> Actually, I think lubricity out of it is going to help. There's, there's two things that are going to affect your power inside your um, fuel. One is the BTU content, and then the other one's going to be the c -tain. So if you could think about the c -tain is what's going to kind of light it all on fire. You know, that's the wick to the dynamite. But how much um, TNT is in that stick of dynamite, that's the BTU content. So if you took kerosene, kerosene has a really high cetane value, but it's got a very low BTU content. So you will have less fuel economy burning mm -hmm. kerosene than you would number two. Yeah. If you took a number three fuel and burned it, you would have a, even more BTU content, um, but you, it'd be harder to light. It'd be like trying to light oil up. Right. So you wouldn't have the explosion capacity. Yeah. So if you mix cetane in with number three oil, man, you'd have it going. Yeah. This so, you can get to burn and go through your injector tips. Yeah, so so a lot of people use transmission fluid or two-cycle oil to mm -hmm. add lubricity to their fuel. They normally put that in at a pretty high percentage, so they would be messing with the BTU content mm -hmm. of the fuel, where when you use an additive, there are really concentrated additives out there that are really effective mm -hmm. at Im improving lubricity. And those go in at like a one to fifteen hundred ratio, so you're virtually not you're 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 improving the lubricity without messing with the BTU content. Correct. The, the EDT um, and our lubricity additive that we're coming out with as soon as I find out what the name is would both do a better job than transmission fluid to cycle oil at probably one fourth the price. I mean, literally, it would yeah. be less money and you get a better effect from it overall. Yeah. And with those products, you're going to create ash which is going to deposit somewhere. I mean, it might just go out the exhaust, but they are, there's a lot of ash contained in those. So um, ash coming from the metal, like the additives that are in there are gonna be metal. So the, that ash is gonna deposit itself on your valves, inside your exhaust system, or just inside there somewhere. So it's better. What we're doing is a much better way to go than that. Yeah, yeah we'll be publishing that data shortly, just so, just so you guys know. Um, so when we ran our tests, you know, we ran them at, you know, basically what you'd run in a chainsaw, like a one to 50 on the on the two cycle oil, where we compared it to our additive was the one to 1500. And they, they actually had a very similar uh, reduction in lubricity. So, you know, you had to use, what what is that, 30 times more. Mm -hmm. uh, to come up with the same, the same, same results. Yeah. yeah. Well, hopefully that answers. So no, Kyle, the answer is no, the lubricity does not act opposite. It, it probably actually increased your BTU content, your fuel a little bit, because lubricity additive is a um, higher BTU content product than diesel fuel is. Did we get all the questions? Just want to make sure we didn't miss any. They're coming in pretty good now. See, Kyle's really good at, at yeah. multitasking. He's <laughs> over here talking and going through them. Me and Kevin, pss, Yeah, we're rookies at this. It. We need you, Kyle. <laughs> Next time you're going to have to just Skype in from the road and, <laughs> and do. <laughs> Yeah, Trey Campbell said, uh, running Stix Eliminator in my 6.7 now runs like brand new. Thanks. Thanks, Trey. Thanks. Kevin's trying to read. You can read that yeah. a lot, Kevin. <laughs> um, Evan Tracy uh, he said, it's a new product with the same treat rate as EDT, but more than twice the price. Honestly, if you're talking about the lubricity additive, we haven't established the price yet. I think he's talking about that Pittsburgh Power. Oh, the Pittsburgh Power. Okay, gotcha. Yeah, he was the one who brought up about that. 
Yeah, we're, we'll we'll look into that. But yeah. there's there's no way it could be any stronger than what we're doing. Like Kevin said, um, we we've maxed out what the EPA will allow, and even in some of the EU testing, it looks like we're going to have to dilute the product down if we're going to sell um, very much of it over there because they don't want it that strong. Yeah, it is it is the strongest product money can buy. I, I don't know how else anybody could do anything to it to make it any better. Yeah. What else have we got there? Yeah, Mark says I have original. I have some of the original friction reducer jug on my shelf. Does it have a shelf life? If not, I'll use it in my lawn equipment. Um, basically, what we tell people if if the product sat on a shelf for a couple years, all you really need to do is just shake it up a little bit, just to just to make sure that everything's evenly dispersed. You know, if you're not using the whole whole thing. Uh, you know, there, it, it's, it likely hasn't separated out, but just as a precaution, we, we tell people to do it, to shake it a little bit. That's good advice, but it, it's still good to use. Yeah. So that Stiction Eliminator with FR3 and not having any issues. There you go. Stick, Stiction Eliminator has FR3 built into it, so we don't need to use both of them at the same time. Not that we're opposed to you spending more money with us. We're okay with that. But in the end, it's, it's really all set up to do what, what needs to happen there. So, all right, anything else? Should we get rolling on and give away some product, or did you think of something else? Well, there, there's one more thing that uh, uh, marketing had prepared for us. Just, just a question for, for us to talk over. Um, has, have additives changed over time? Yeah. Yeah. I would say we go to this show called STLE every year. It's a Society of Tribological and Tribology and Lubrication, Lubrication Engineers. Engineers. And basically, the purpose of that show is to learn the, the new technologies that are out. You know, people people never rest as far as you know. the The entrepreneurial spirit of Americans is to keep doing better and better and chasing chasing the uh, uh, the, the new answer to the problem. So. People are continually trying to to develop new new additives and and push the envelope. So, so to answer your question, oils have changed. Oils have changed. Is, is he on there live, or is that just for us to see? Okay. Hey, what's up, guys? Good. Hey, Kyle's guys, on the screen there. Good. Good. I figured it. There. This needed a little bit of unnerding. This is like too much nerd for one screen. Thank you. <laughs> well, I just wanted to remind everybody that uh, we're actually en route to VMP right now. Um, we are rolling through the beautiful hills of West Virginia. And I should show you, we're in construction right now. But uh, it's this nice scenery. I was going to show you Rich driving the BMW, which is a rare sight, but. We're in a construction zone, so he's behind me right now. But anybody that's out near Virginia, come out to VMP this weekend. It's the next leg of the Outlaw Diesel Super Series. We are going to have a big booth out there. We're giving away samples of our EDT, and we're going to have all of the products at 30% off. So it's a great race show deal. Oh, uh, you know what? Things just opened up here. Look at this. What are we looking at? Uh, yeah, Rich is going to drop on the car. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I guess you're just moving too slow, Kyle. Okay. All right, well, he's breaking up. You want to put him on mute for a second there? So Kyle's on his way down to Virginia for for a race that he's going through West Virginia. Looks like he's having a good time. <laughs> Since he's breaking up, we'll jump back on to how additives have changed over time. So originally, you know, back when, when diesels were a lot looser and not nearly as um, tight as they are today, they would use animal oils and vegetable oils and things to try to get some lubricity in there and do some different things. Um, tallows were used at one point. Um, Back in the day, PTFE was used a lot. Um, then they switched over to petroleum-based products, which, and now today, I think that as far as top-tier products like ours, we're using full synthetics. Yeah. And then as far as the additives go, one of the interesting things that we do that other people don't do um, is we really span the globe for new and exciting things. 
So to understand this, and I won't, I won't bore you to death, so Kyle won't be able to make fun of me, but <laughs> most of the additives that are made in the world are made for large volume users. So if like a Lubrizol or an Afton or a Vanderbilt, they're looking to make a product for like Chevron that Chevron's gonna put into millions and millions and millions of gallons of hydraulic fluid, or maybe they're making a product for millions of gallons of compressor fluid mm -hmm. or engine oil. Top treat, these are all called top treat products. That's something that you put in your engine on top of what's already there. This is a very low part of the market. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is not billions and billions of dollars. So most of the companies that are into additives, they're looking for basic, easy things that gives them something to put into a bottle and do a label. Right. That's not what we do. We talk to all the vendors, scour the world and say, okay, what are you using this for? Well, we use this on compressors on offshore drilling rigs. Well, have you ever thought about using this as an additive in a gas engine? Well, no, but it would work for that, and this is how. So then we we try to think outside the box and see what's being used in all these other areas, and then how we can apply them to our to our market, which is the top tree market. Yeah, exactly. And, and and you know the question I always had, you know, even growing up was, well, if, if an additive is so good, why, why doesn't the OEMs use it in their own formula? And, and the answer to that is that they they will eventually, but it takes a really, really long time to come around. So the nice thing about us is being kind of small and small enough that, that we can adapt and, and bring these new technologies into our product line. And definitely nanotechnology will be part of mainstream additives in the future. When mm -hmm. that's going to be, we don't know. But we, we take advantage of the fact that we're we can be early adopters and offer higher performing products before they're you know incorporated into the you know good, into the oils a good point to that would be um, 20 years ago all the oil manufacturers said there was no need to put molybdenum in engine oils mm. chevron mobile pens oil, they all said that that's all snake oil yeah. using molybdenum and all the custom lubricant companies used molybdenum um, primrose schaefer hydrotex lubrication yeah. engineers most of their oils had molly in them and liquid molly was selling liquid molly yeah. and now today i don't think there's an engine oil that does not use molly um, hmm. they use it as a as a friction modifier now yeah. so it's they would they do adopt these technologies eventually but then the other thing going against it is in some ways they don't have to like if i'm pens oil and my 5w30 meets the bill I don't really need to make it any better. Sure, and yeah. there's there's really very little chance that um, anybody out there or most people are going to be able to tell the difference between Penn's oil 5W30 or Valvoline 5W30. So if I'm Penn's oil, it's like, you know, it's really about brand loyalty. You know, people like Penn's oil, they buy Penn's oil. People like Valvoline, they buy Valvoline. Yeah. There's, you know, they sell more oil to quick change Jiffy Lubes and things like that than they do on the shelf. So yeah. it's... It's really a matter of branding and giving away free hats and t-shirts and getting you to love their product. It's not about technology. You don't, very seldom do you see, you know, Quaker State saying, my oil is 20% better than Valvoline. Right. They don't do that because yeah. they don't have to and they don't really care. Hmm. But we do. I mean, that's what we, we live and die on the quality. It's all about the um, creating the unique products that really solve a problem are really top tier that, that our customers want. To use we we want to explain them to you we get excited about them we want to tell you all the things that's in it we don't want to be the guy that says yeah i don't know what's in that it's just something we put on the shelf so right. we're <laughs> we're the opposite of that yeah. like bizarro world <laughs> okay so we got brent says an older 60 started your sc and edt a couple of oil changes ago advisable to do a maintenance dose every oil change in place of fr3 or every third Usually we would put do a maintenance dose. You're talking about, I assume you're talking about the stiction eliminator. I would just go with stiction when they're every third oil change or fourth. It's, it's not an exact science, but the main idea is just to get a little bit extra cleaner in there. Once you cleaned it out the first time really well, I mean, you probably could just go with FR3 from that point on. It's going to keep it clean, but we don't know that because we haven't tested it that way. But theoretically, it, it should do that. Yeah. Now Kyle's cringing right now because he's saying, don't say that, that's not what our label says, but it, it is what it is. Um, 
Brent says 170,000 miles, one injector replaced a few months ago, oil change every 5,000. That's, that's cool, that's good. I mean, getting one injector in 170,000 miles is good. Keep the stiction eliminator every third oil change, and it'll last. We've got people that called in uh, with 280,000, 300,000 miles on mm -hmm. original six liter yeah. injectors. Yeah, quite a few. So, sounds like that's a great truck. People love the six liter once they work out the bugs. Mm -hmm. It's working out the bugs part that makes you want to pull your hair out. Yeah, bulletproof and run good oil. What's that? Bulletproof and run good oil. There you go. <laughs> All right, Kyle's out of the picture. He's no signal in West Virginia, so we're back on. I think we could wrap this up and give away some banners. Yeah. Anything else? I think that's Trey, it. Trey? Yeah. One of the other things that's changed on the additive side, as we're talking about how additives have changed, um, the technology, and I'm, I'm going to put this out as a question because you were at the last STLE mm -hmm. with me, but... It seems like the technology to analyze what the additives are doing has advanced a lot in the last 10 years. Mm. So when I'm thinking back when they used to advertise Slick 50 and Duralube, um, I don't know that they had really good advanced technology to know it was more seat of the pants. Like, I feel like I got more power or mm. we ran a dyno maybe. Yeah. Where today we have, you know, really clear microscopic pictures of the surface of the metal. And they can say, you know, when we use nanocarbons, this is what it looked like. When we use nanotitanium, this is what it looked like. Right. So we're able, as scientists, to go back in there and, and compare the results and say, this one worked better than this one, mm -hmm. clearly, instead of 90% sure. <laughs> yeah. No, that's, that's totally, that was my take, too. Yeah. And it seems like nanotech, the last meeting we were at a couple of months ago, nanotechnology was one of the hot buzzwords. Yeah. I mean, it's a whole... The whole conference was one area, one set of rooms was just on that. Yeah. So yeah, nanotechnology is the up and coming technology. And esters, and that's what we're doing with both of ours. Esters and nanos, so we've, we're kind of ahead of the curve. I mean, we were, again, the first people doing this. Yeah. So we have Trey Slikes on. Maybe. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Trey. How's it going? How you doing, man? All right, I'm doing great. Can you see me? I guess maybe that's... No, we can't see you, but we can hear you. Are you going to the race? Right, Are you in Virginia? No, no, we're going to go up tomorrow. Um, we're going to be there tomorrow, and we're going to bring home some trophies Saturday. But hmm. we've got to go uh, go do some work this afternoon, so a little okay. bit less exciting today. Nice. Well, that's pretty confident that you're going to bring in some trophies. <laughs> well, you know, when you're when you're running the best oil, the best additives, and you got the best team and the best people around, and um, I hear that, that you tweaked the car a little bit this week. I, I appreciate the input on the tune. Um, and now that you've driven it some and we made those chassis adjustments and tune adjustments, I think we're definitely going to get the win this weekend. So I, I appreciate Chris, that, Chris. Chris blew the cobwebs out of it. Yeah, yeah, we can't have that. You know, it's a, it's a car that needs to be driven a certain way. And uh, I just maybe want, we want to make sure to that, that it was as good as you said it was. Yeah, well, what did you think? I thought it went really fast. I, mean, I was yeah. able to get, I was able to get up to 120. So that was on a county road. On a county road in a short <laughs> span of time. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. That thing flies. It, it, it'll go uh, zero to 120 in, in exactly 1,320 feet. It's a quarter mile, so yeah. I can hit 120 miles an hour in a quarter mile. So. Yeah. The bad thing though is, you know, I was driving back on State Route 95 in front of the State Patrol building, realized I was going 95. It's like, man, this thing. It's hard to keep it going low, you know. So we it need really, to make sure that doesn't It really happen. does. It, if you go 60 or 55 in that car, it feels like you're crawling. Yeah. I know. you gotta, exactly. you got to learn to use that cruise control, and that's, that's the only way you can drive a car like that. It's just it's interesting. But um, anyway, so uh, what, guys, what were you guys doing for a topic today? Um, I just kinda, I'm on my way to work. I've been feeling kind of under the weather this morning, so... I came on here last minute and just uh, I heard something about Molly being used as a friction modifier, but I didn't really catch the first part. Oh, we were just talking about the advancement in additives and you know like what's happened over the last 50 years with different additives and how they go. And we were yeah. Kevin was explaining that we're early, we are early adopters and we bring our we find things out quicker and we're a lot faster to bring into market than bigger oil companies and. One of the questions we always get or often get is, if the additive is so good, why don't they just put it in the engine oil? Yeah, yeah, I think I heard that part. Yeah, because... Because it takes forever for yeah, them to figure it out. It, I mean, it, they have to test it for it 20 does. years 
Yeah. But Molly's yeah. a good well, Molly's a good example of that. Back twenty years ago, almost no over the counter oil had Molly in it. But all the custom oil companies would use Molly disulfide, um, you know, like Primrose, Hydrotex, Schaefer. Well then, you know, time went on and all the oil companies picked it up, so now almost every oil out there has Molly in it to some degree. So it just took them right. longer to, to pick up on the technology. And in, in my research, there's a uh, other friction modifiers that you can use outside of Molly, but I don't want to talk about certain things if we don't need to talk about them. But I've I've found some really good stuff in the uh, the adrenaline oils. Um, one of the cars I drive on uh, at the bracket races has done really well on the adrenaline R5. Uh, another guy switched over to R3 last weekend and he run it up at a big race at a big $5,000 race. Um, he was very impressed, um, said that the car was very consistent and repeated over and over and over again. So I'm um, getting some really good feedback out of the adrenaline oils um, in, in some of the really nice bracket cars here in the southeast. So obviously mm -hmm. the additive packages and, and that adrenaline oil is doing well. So. Yeah. Well, thanks. That's good to hear. What One of the tricky parts is trying to get the balance out. You know, as Kevin will tell you, a lot of times adding one thing in makes something else come out of suspension. Mm -hmm. So I remember earlier weight, like anemone is a really good thing to use because it does a great job in there. Yeah. But this was way back when <laughs> when we were trying to improve the stiction eliminator and we put some anemone in there. Man, that stuff worked really, really well. Ab until absolutely. First I well, until the first time that the warehouse got down below 40 degrees and all the <laughs> anemone dropped to the bottom of the totes, we could not right. get that. We I, couldn't get it. We couldn't get to blend back in. So we ended up, you know, needing to, to filter it all out and start over again. But it, it, again, it's a balance trying to find the right things that work all the time under all the right conditions. And that's that's what we're good at is figuring those things yeah. out and getting it done. Yeah. Kevin's got a couple stories yeah. like that. He's run into this yeah. a few times. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah, not all yeah, successes, but, but. Go ahead, Kevin. Go ahead, Trey. Sorry, go ahead, Trey. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I was going to say, uh, I'm just uh, doing my own research. When you said antimony there, I've done some research and, and saw how, you know, antimony in the right proportions with zinc in the right base oil, which the adrenaline, the group 4 PAO. You know, I've, I've found some independent research where that combination really makes lifter wear, top ring wear, and bearing wear almost non-existent. So I think that that independent piece of information there um, I found on my own was, was good. And I've shared that with a few people that I've talked to about the oil, and, well, and I've gotten good feedback from that. So. Well, send it our way, and we'll, we'll put it on the Absolutely. website so everybody can see it. Hey, yeah, Trey. I'll do that. Cut. Yep. Kyle wants an update on the truck that they worked on last week. Yep, so the, the truck, that's the 2008 6.4 liter power stroke, has 182,000 miles on it. What we did is we, we got a um, tuner from Ziegler's Performance in Canton, Ohio, who's also a dealer for Hot Shot Secret, and we did the work at Tier 1 Diesel in Rockingham, North Carolina, and they're a new dealer. I brought them on recently. And what we did is we put the tuner on, and also the bigger thing is that we put a Franz filter kit on his 6.4 liter um, and switched him over to the Blue Diamond 540 PAO oil. And before all of this, he was getting around 11 and a half to 12 miles per gallon. Um, we went ahead and flushed his radiator, put a new thermostat, filled it up with Hot Shot Secret Yellow 150,000 mile antifreeze coolant um so he's got all hot shots products i filled his tank up and put my secret formula of diesel extreme and edt in his tank and it ran really well and he got a uh, 16 and a half miles per gallon out of that tank um after everything was said and done where he was usually getting 11 and a half so oh, we got nice. him uh got him a big improvement there he's got an oil that he can use for a very long time with that Franz filter, and he's very excited about, you know, the truck running some more smoothly, and you know that he thinks that he's going to be able to get at least 300,000 miles out of that truck. And I said that 
I don't think if if you don't, it, I don't think it's going to be anything from you know that we can control on our end. So Very it would cool. be something else. So yeah, so that's doing well. We've got some video, and we're going to put put that together and have that for everyone to see here soon. But it was pretty impressive to see those numbers go up like that. So oh, nice. yeah, that's very that's... happy. Yeah. All Keep right, we're going to wind and, it down you know, here. It's been, been a little yeah. over an hour. Well, good luck on Saturday. Absolutely. Send you some updates. Thanks, sir. Okay. Thanks, sir. Bye, guys. Bye, Kevin. What's Bye, Chris. So let's give away a couple of – we had just one other question I wanted to address. Um, Big Monkey wants to know, any recommendations on oil brand to use your product over another brand? The way our product, you're talking about Stiction Eliminator and FR3, I assume, it should mix with any oil mm -hmm. um, equally. Like, there's no there's no advantage. Like, Penn's oil is not going to do better than Quaker State or Chevron. So Yeah, I, I would say, you know, in, in diesels, just in general, to run a really good oil, like a, like a synthetic oil, you know, if you think about how hot a turbo gets, you know, you shut your truck down, that oil is like cooking inside the turbo. And, you know, even if you don't use our oil, you know, just always use a really good oil in a diesel. Yeah. Synthetic or better. Yeah, and keep keep track of it. One of the things that diesels do is they build up soot inside because it is a dirtier fuel and it's a combustion process. It's not lighting on fire like a gasoline. And one of the things I learned a long time ago from an old mechanic, and it seemed to work, um, when you check your oil, like, you know, you pull the dipstick through your fingers and then you wipe your fingers off with a rag. If your hand is stained, then the soot's over 1%. You need to change it. If the oil wipes off clean, then it's yeah. probably below 1%. I've checked it 100 times, like, against oil analysis, and it's always worked. So yeah. it's kind of a cool thing. So just look look out for the soot. Try to keep it clean and use a, use a good oil, best oil you can afford to use at the time. And Jeff Slater says he would love to hear more about the 6.4. He's got an 0864 with 238,000 miles. And he only gets 11.5 miles per gallon. Hmm. Okay, Trey, we're going to need a write up on all this. This is going to be an event. We're going to maybe we'll put it in the LSI Innovation Magazine and make it a full featured story, step by step. Oh, we should make a TV show out of it. We need a TV show. That well, would be he's good. He's been videotaping his test, so all right. that'd be a good Let's test see. to put on video. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> we could become the next truck, you. We just do our own. And you know? Lumberjack could be the star. Yeah, Lumberjack. That's <laughs> it. You, we'll put you on TV, and we'll just bring a new truck in every week, and we'll, we'll start doing things to it. Yep. That's the plan. Yep. It could be fun. Okay. Let's give away some banners, and then we need to get back to work. Yeah. So why don't you pick out a couple of people there? Okay. Send us your Let's information. Uh, definitely Pig Monkey. And. This is the banner we're talking about. And Evan Tracy. Levi. You got me. There we go. <laughs> so send us your contact information. We'll drop one of these in the mail. And we're also going to get some gasoline extreme out to somebody had old gas. Who was that? Yeah, that was that was Mark. Mark Powell's. Yeah, Mark, get us your information over, and we'll get you a bottle of gasoline extreme. Okay. We'll get it right out today or tomorrow, and then you call in next week and let us know how it worked. All right. So everybody have a great afternoon. We're yep. going to head out of here. We will we'll see you next Thursday. Yep. Sounds great. Yep. Thanks.